pound for pound sports entertainment hit the like button right now i appreciate y'all for tuning in man hit the like button i'm gonna say it one more time that little thumbs up button at the bottom of the screen just scroll on down for your boy help the channel out you know what i'm saying and hit that like button while you at it hit the subscribe button man we always gonna give you the news the rumors if we're wrong we gonna update you if something going on we're gonna let you guys know we will keep you guys in the loop no matter what you know what i'm saying so uh it's your host f merit pound for pound sports entertainment i appreciate y'all for tuning in with me um got a couple things today right um we'll start off by we'll start off by saying the aj situation right now there's a couple publications couple websites couple people you know a lot of news circulating a couple credible very credible guys in the industry um coming out saying you know aj's close to taking the step aside money 15 million some people saying he did say you know he did take it he in rumors that he's taking it rumors that he doesn't want to take it he, it's gonna be 15 to 20 million you know i reported on it absolutely but i also put the sources in which i got these things from and i always put allegedly okay not gonna lie to y'all nothing is final till it's final now with that being said obviously word got around and aj had to come out and correct everybody so salute to anthony joshua for coming out setting the record straight now what he says was you know he actually was kind of you know from, from the video that i posted you know you guys go check that out it's actually him speaking his audio him saying if you don't hear it from me you know don't even you know i'm just paraphrasing but, but if you don't hear it from me it's bullshit basically i don't like to curse on here but you know whatever if you don't hear from me it's bs you know he's he he you know he hasn't seen a contract hasn't signed a contract hasn't done any interviews this that and the third so you know somebody was lying somebody you know some people put that out there or you know i don't know whose team it was tyson fury's team possibly i don't know all i know is they said the same thing about deontay wilder supposedly taking step aside money for the third uh for the trilogy fight with him and tyson fury so you, you see what I'm, you see what's going on here? Tyson Fury wants to fight Uzi. Tyson Fury wants uh, Anthony Joshua to step aside so he can make that fight happen. Um, realistically, the bigger fight would be Tyson Fury and AJ. Okay, unfortunately, AJ did, didn't handle his business and got beat up by Uzi. If you watch the 12th round, Jesus, just watch it. Watch the whole fight. Beautiful performance by Uzi. He earned that belt. No doubt he is the champ. Unified champ. He's one belt away from being undisputed again. He needs more credit for that. The way he went in there, it was boxing AJ, mixing it up, using his angles. Stuff was getting dicey. You know, handled his business. 12th round, he just unloaded on AJ. That last 10 seconds, listen, last 10 to 20 seconds, he just went crazy on AJ. But um, we got to see how AJ bounced back. Now, the video I made was talking about the um, step aside money and how, you know, allegedly Ronnie Shields might possibly be his new trainer. And obviously, when you get a new trainer or add some new people to the team, you're going to need time for chemistry. You're going to need time for you guys to gel together. You know what I'm saying? Um, add some new wrinkles to the game, what have you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I think step AJ step aside is not a bad idea. It doesn't make you less of a man to step aside doesn't say you know i might not be able to beat this guy it's i'm adding this i'm adding this new guy this new trainer to the team and we have to build some chemistry let's take a fight in between take that 15 million and then move forward and then we can get the winner of him and tyson fury that's how i that's how i see it but i mean aj's come out and said it's not true so we'll see what happens um i mean technically it's not done he hasn't he hasn't stepped aside or has it not stepped aside you know what i'm saying so i mean nothing's done until it's done so i don't all i know is i don't see no fight date for uzik and, and aj i don't see no you know nothing right as of right now so i mean we'll see eddie hearn says he's gonna sit down and talk to aj i believe tomorrow so we'll see what happens with that situation but salute to aj for coming out hearing what the box community was talking about and setting everybody straight and addressing the rumors you know so salute to him man all love and respect to anthony joshua now Next thing was um, I seen David Lemieux and David Benavidez. It's going to be fighting for the interim WBC 168 belt. We'll see what happens with that. Now, listen, this is a very dangerous fight for both men. David Benavidez is a wrecking ball. He is very skilled, always coming forward, putting pressure on his fighters. He just he just loves to bang with you. He's going to stand there with you. 
And I think that would be to David Lemieux's advantage and could possibly be his disadvantage. Because, I mean, David Lemieux is a little bit older. I don't remember the last time he's fought. I think he is coming off of a, a knockout win or something like that over. I think he fought on the undercard of uh, Jaime Magia and Gabe Rosado. Not sure. Didn't see the undercard completely. I'm not going to lie to you. I just tuned into the main event, so I didn't even know he was on the card. But, I mean, I don't know how old David Lemieux is. What, 35, 36? I don't know. But we all know he's got a nasty hook. Ooh, his hooks are nasty, boy. Lee, don't stand in front of him. Even Triple G had to be like, you know what? I'm going to pepper him with the jab. I'm not going to go blow for blow with him. I'm not going to give him the opportunity to catch me nothing. You know, catch me with anything. And that was smart because he was strategic. You don't – sometimes you can't bang – you can't just bang with everybody. You got to be strategic in your game plan. Break them down and then do that after you've, you know, taken all that out of them. You know what I'm saying? But um, David Lemieux, we got to see what he has left in the tank against David Benavidez. David Benavidez, he'll add another uh, – he'll add a great name to his resume. He'll And he's he's staying active. That's one thing you got to give David, David Benavidez, like, he's staying active. Some people say, oh, he's having trouble making weight and he's he's lost it. Okay, cool, cool. Well, this is what you do. You keep him active. You keep him motivated with the fight. If you don't give him a fight date or give him an opponent, he's going to blow up in between fights most likely, just like every other fighter nowadays. Okay? You keep him active, keep him in the gym, and guess what? You're fighting for your, your – you're essentially fighting for your belt back, your WBC 168 belt back. Okay? Because I don't see – I honestly don't see Canelo coming back to 68. He's already undisputed. Let's just whatever. Give up the belts, and that would make you the full time champ again. So then you'll be the you'll be a three time champ. You'll be a three time. You'll probably be the youngest three time champ. You know, in in the in the game ever probably. I don't know. But um, I'm looking forward to that that fight. There's no fight date that's been set. I'm you know if you if you looked on the thumbnail, that's that's what David Benavidez had put on his uh, Instagram and social media. So it's got the flyer up. Him and uh, David Lemieux. It's gonna be a great fight. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, two other things, and then we'll wrap this little mini video up. Um, Roley and Javante Tank Davis. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The WBA has ordered that fight yet again. Yet again, that fight has been ordered. WBA strap is going down 135. Um, a lot of people didn't want this fight. I have no problem with it. I like the little mini buildup they had with the one press conference. I like the fact that Roley is not scared of Tank. Roley wants to bang with Tank. Roley has a style that very well may frustrate and piss Tank off. You can just tell by the trash talk. Tank felt disrespected by the fact that he was even fighting Roley. Okay. Now, you know, situation happened in between, you know, un, you know, it is what it is. Roley has been cleared of all charges and we can move forward with this fight. I'm looking forward to it. Now, do I think Roley has a chance? Mm, that's a tough question. I think Roley definitely has a bully type of style that I don't know if it works against or works with Tank. I'm not really sure because Tank Tank can bang. He's going to stand his ground. He wants you to stand there anyway. It makes his job easier because he has the power to get you up out of there. I think Roley's so awkward that he could just catch Tank with some crazy stuff because there are times where a lot of people are saying that Tank does get hit a little bit too much. You know, so, I mean, if Tank gives him an opportunity, he catches him to something. I don't know, man. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, good thing for Roley that he's been staying focused and staying in the gym. That's one thing. So I think the level that he was before he got taken out of the fight with Tank, okay, he's not at that level anymore. I think he's gotten better. Well, I mean, I would imagine, I would hope he's gotten better. He's more sharper. He's focused. And he's ready to roll. Now, another thing a lot of people are not probably thinking or mentioning, Tank hurt his hand against Isaac Cruz in his last fight. We got to see... You know, obviously, we would have heard if he would have needed surgery or something like that. But he hurt his hand. Hopefully, that's healed up 100%. And also, Tank spars a lot. He fights a lot. So, hopefully, he sat down, let his body, give his body a little bit of time to heal from that fight, you know, and, and just let his hand heal in general. And we can make that fight happen probably, pff, what? Hmm. It's January now. We'll say probably, what, end of March, early April, maybe, you know? I think that's a good time. But yeah, let's not put it in LA again like it was last time. Can we bring that can we bring that thing back to Atlanta? That'd be cool. You know? Or maybe uh put put it up in I don't know, put it back in put in Baltimore. I don't know. All I know is Roley, whew, the trash talk this time I think is gonna be even worse whenever they actually have the press conference. I hope Roley doesn't wear that fur. 
<laughs> he, that man wore fur outside. It was hot as hell. He thought he was going to be inside. But nonetheless, I don't know, man. I'm still, I, I like the fight. A lot of people going to be mad. But let's see what happens, man. Styles make fights. That saying is so true on all levels. Styles truly do make fights for everything. Okay? So look forward to that. There's no fight date been set. I'm just giving you all the news. The WBA has officially ordered that fight to happen. Roley, Roley Romero and Javante Tank Davis. Look forward to that. Now, wrapping this whole thing up, a lot of people still still talking about the Gary Russell situation. Him losing to, um, I can't even pronounce the guy's name, Magasu or whatever. Um, you know, he lost. He lost. Okay, listen. I had to fight either a draw Gary, I don't know. It could have went either way, honestly. Like, it wasn't that good of a fight because Gary, he got hurt. I believe he hurt his arm in the third round. He was very defensive. He was counterpunching Magasu. I'll just say called Magasu. I can't pronounce his name right now. I don't know off the top of my head. I'll just say he was counterpunching Magasu. Magasu started off really, really good the first three rounds, going to the body, mixing it up, applying a lot of pressure on Gary Russell. Gary Russell made Magasu change up his tempo and fight at Gary's rate. That's what a lot of people are forgetting. Gary made him slow that shit down in the middle rounds. It was taking the middle rounds, taking it one round at a time, countering, moving, hitting him with the left hand. You know, he wasn't even using the right hand. That's what I don't even understand how you keep running into the same punch the entire fight and not notice the man hurt his, his arm. I don't understand that. Gary Russell had that. A, a, a doctor came into his corner, I believe, in round three, asked him, are you okay? He said, I'm good. You know, it was an old injury. It flared up. It is what it is. Gary lost. But the thing that a lot of people are talking about is everything that's happening outside of the ring. A lot of people are saying Gary got screwed out of that fight. They didn't want Gary to be champion. Some people are saying uh, uh, Gary, you know, had the rankings. They took him off the rankings so fast after he lost that fight. Faster than they usually update the rankings. They like boxing. The only thing that you can say about Gary, and this I've noticed the past couple of years, they can't talk about a skill set. They, they can't talk about how good of a champion he is. They talk about his inactivity that's it how he fights once a year how uh, and, and this is gary coming off a two-year layoff i feel like in those two years you should have just went ahead and got the surgery done if you needed it to be done you could have gotten it done rehab and then been the best version of gary russell and that's what i feel i feel that like we've never got to see the best version of gary russell and another thing that pisses me off we could have had gary russell against leo santa cruz when we wanted that fight before Leo Santa Cruz got knocked out by Javante Tank Davis. Before uh, Gary Russell lost to Magasu, or whatever his name is. All of them respected him. But come on, bro. Gary had Leo Santa Cruz dead, and he had his arm over him. Calling him out. You can't get more disrespectful than that. And Leo Santa Cruz, I, everybody says he's a nice guy. I need to see that warrior in you, bro. Somebody put my somebody put their hands around my daddy. I'm I'm it's going I'm going in. I'm gonna be like, hey, make the fight. I don't care about who I'm fighting, who I was supposed to fight, who we supposed to fight. We making that fight now. He got to he got, got to punish him. He got to get this work. But nope, didn't happen. So guess what? Leo's knocked out. He's got a fight coming up on the Keith Thurman undercard. I believe in two weeks in, in MGM. Check that out. Pay per view seventy five dollars or seventy nine dollars. Congratulations. Enjoy that. Um, and then we got Gary losing. Now where does Gary Russell go from here? Now you hurt your arm. Rumor that you hurt your hand. How do you bounce back from this? WBC is not going to give you anything. Who are you signed to? Some people say you signed to Al. Some people saying he's not signed to Al. What do you do? Not to mention the money is going to decrease of how much you're going to make. You know, how much you were going to make. So do you want to even take the time to try to rebuild yourself up, go through all the politics and everything? I knew when it was a close fight, they were going to give it to the other guy. Because they want the other guy to fight and be more active than Gary Russell. Salute to Gary Russell and the whole Russell family. You're a great champion, sir. It's up to you, man. I feel like come back stronger. Get the surgery, dude. It's time to get the surgery. Come back. Be ready. Be ready for any type of short notice fight. Be ready for anything. Be ready. That's all I got to say. Hit the like button. Comment below. Share. Do all of that. It's your host, F. Merritt. Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. Oh, we don't even. We don't even. I don't even want to get on the whole. Uh, Gary Russell coming out saying he had an injury, right? Because a lot of people are saying, oh, that's excuses. But didn't Lomachenko do the same thing when he lost to Tio, Tio Fimo? Didn't he come out and, and, and have surgery, shoulder surgery? Didn't he come out and say he was hurt? Nobody says nothing. Not only that, but 
Gary, uh, Gary Russell didn't blame the judges. He said, man, politics of boxing, I beat that boy, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's mad at Gary Russell for even getting in the ring. To me, that shows your warrior mentality. You didn't want to mess up the fight. I am more concerned about the double standard. Nobody says nothing about Lomachenko when he did the same thing. Made a video. Matter of fact, check it out. It's on my page. I'll put the link in the description to Lomachenko talking about the judges. Talking about how they robbed him and stuff. And how he was already hurt and had to need a shoulder surgery. And wanted to pull out that fight. And Bob basically forced him to fight Teofimo. But that's neither here nor there. Hit the like button. Comment below. Share. Do all of that. Hit the subscribe button for your boy. It's your host, F. Merit, Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. I'm gone. I greatly appreciate y'all. Support who supports you. With that being said, I'm gone.